Hey guys, your boy Vertus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 survival horror game series. And in today's video, we are going to be working on the press enter to begin screen. So, you know, at the beginning of our main menu, we've got this little bit in the top right hand corner, which tells the player to press the enter key to start the game. So basically, the player can start the game by pressing the enter key rather than going through all the buttons, all the options and all of that cool stuff. We've got loads to work on. We're going to be going over setting up the script behind it, creating the animation and also setting up your game modes as well. Well, because at the moment they're a little bit all over the place and what we want is for our main menu not to have a HUD, not be able to control it and you know in the normal game we want the player to be able to play it as normal, have the HUD on the screen, be able to walk around, use their flashlight and sprint and everything. So without further ado let's go ahead and dive in and get started. Okay, so we're back in our main menu level and there is a couple of things that we need to do before we can actually get this press enter to start button actually working. So the first thing that we need to do is we actually need to create a player controller that can actually handle the input for, you know, the enter key. So when we press the enter key, from there we can tell it to go ahead and fire off the script that we want it to. So having said that, we need to go into the world settings of the main menu level and we need to create a new pawn class, you know, the, the player controller, uh, not the player control the player character and we also need to make sure we set everything up so it's all correct so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my world settings now if you guys don't have this already just go to go over to window at the top and then just make sure world uh, world settings is selected here from here we need to go ahead and change everything to third person game mode so that we can actually play around with this stuff now if we leave it at this you're probably going to get your heads up display on the screen and all that kind of stuff which is not great um so what we need to do from here really is we need to go ahead and create a new pawn class to do that just go ahead and press create new blueprint and then from here we need to call this whatever you like i'm going to call this main player uh or menu player and I'm just going to go ahead and press OK. Now I'm just going to leave this in the default blueprints folder net for now. Give that a second to create it and open it up and we need to attach in a little bit of script from there. So in my event graph what I need to do is I need to set up an event for the enter key. So for when the enter key is pressed. So I'm just going to go ahead and right click and type in enter. From here we're going to drag it out and once you press it we're going to tell it to open a level. As for the level name just go ahead and set this to level 1. And that should be it really for what we need to do here. Um, so if we go ahead and test this, we can go ahead and do that. I'm going to press the enter key. You can't see me doing that. Everything's going to freeze up while it tries to load the level. I haven't actually loaded the level in this version of the editor yet. So it's not in the RAM. Um, you can introduce a loading screen later on if you wanted to. But you can see here that it's actually opened up the level now. And that is looking great. There is one, of, one slight issue that we've got here, which is that inside of the level, you can sort of see we haven't got our heads up to display and all that kind of stuff. So having said that, I'm going to go ahead and save the current level at the moment and I'm going to open up my other level just to make sure we've got all of the game mode stuff correct and you know it lets the player play it really. You know it shows the heads up display, lets the player walk around and that kind of stuff. So just give that a couple of seconds to load up. From here, once again, we are just going to make sure we've got the default, uh, the game mode override to third person game mode. From here, we just need to change the default pawn class to third person character. When I go ahead and do that, you can see we've now got our heads up display. We can run around and do all of that cool stuff as well. So just go ahead and save that with, you know, the correct game mode. If you do have any issues, just make sure you set the game modes to exactly the same as I've got down here. So you can see I've got third person game mode, third person character, the normal HUD, player controller, game state, player state, and spectator class. Wow, that is a mouthful. But that is going to be working all just fine for now. So I'm going to go back into my main menu now and I'm going to set up the animation for press enter to start just so we can have it flashing on and off the screen and we'll have it going over and over and over again until the player really presses it really. So I'm just going to give that a second to open up. Once we have done that, um, just go ahead, just open it up. Once we've done that, we're going to open up the widget for it for the main menu and then we just need to set up the animation. Now that's pretty straightforward. I just need to make sure that I find this widget because I haven't got a clue where it is. Um, so let's see if we can find this. It's probably going to be, I think it's in my textures folder, maybe in menu graphics. There you are. And we're going to open this up and you can see we've got our main menu in here. So the first thing that I really want to do is I want to try and rotate these if I can. Uh, which isn't too hard to do and I also need to move these across to sort of get them in position um, If you don't want to rotate them, you don't necessarily have to you can just sort of have it out on the screen here 
which is what I'm probably going to be doing. And also, because the positioning of the text is a little bit all over the place, I'm also going to make sure I've got these anchored to the top right as well. So I think this looks good to me, to be honest. And I might also add a drop shadow. You can add a drop shadow to make it look a little bit fancier if you want to, but this is entirely up to you guys. But anyway, let's go ahead and create this animation once you're happy with the location it's in. I think this looks great for now and I don't necessarily need to rotate it. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the little key icon here and I'm going to create an animation and I'm just going to call this flashing key for now. Go ahead and select that and from here just go ahead and add that little image to your animation. Give this a name for now, I'm just going to call this key icon just to make things easier to work with. You guys really do need to get in the habit of giving everything a name as you go along. For me I've just got button, button, image, image, it doesn't really help with things, it doesn't help you find it under this list here. But you can see now I've given it the name key icon, I can find it just like that. Cool, so that's fine. Because we're going to be working with fade in and out, we need to make sure the default opacity is set to zero. And we also need to do the same thing for the text as well. So just go ahead and change the default opacity to zero. With this key icon, let's go ahead, go ahead and create a color opacity track, as this is going to allow us to sort of adjust the color and opacity over time, really. So we are going to be creating a quick and simple fade in fade out and then we're just going to replay the animation over and over again so i'm going to drag to about one second and then from here i'm going to set the opacity to one and then uh, and over at two seconds we're going to go ahead and set the opacity back down to zero so now if we drag back to the start of the timeline it should sort of just flash on and off just like that which is looking quite nice that's exactly what we want it to do so now we just need to do the exact same thing with the text as well. If you haven't given the text a name already, just go ahead and do that. Key, text, and then once we've done that, just add it into our animation. And once again, we're going to be creating a color and opacity tracks, a track, and just copy the exact same color and opacity for each keyframe. So default opacity is zero, which is great. Over here, we need to set this to one. Just press N to, to create that little keyframe, and then back to two seconds, it should be at zero. That's perfect. And now if we go back to the beginning, they should sort of flash in sync there, which is quite nice. That's perfect. Cool. Next thing that we need to do is, as soon as this widget sort of starts coming up on the screen, we need to tell it to begin playing the animation, because if we don't, it's just going to be a solid object, and, you know, it's not really going to do anything. So get your event construct node, it's going to be in the same way as you know when you begin playing it. From here you just need to tell it to play an animation. Grab that out and then we need to get a reference to the animation which should be up here. If you don't have the little uh, flashing key animation just go ahead and expand it, drag it in just like that, get a reference to it and then boom. Okay so I hook that up to in animation and then if you want it to loop indefinitely, so if you want it to keep on playing and playing and playing while the level is open, set this to zero, or if you only want it to set in a couple of times, you know, you can tell it to do that too. So I'm going to go ahead and compile this, and let's go ahead and see if it's all flashing now. So you can see in the top right hand corner, we've got our text and our button flashing, which is looking really, really nice. So you can see our menu is really coming together here and it's looking really cool. So I am pretty much going to end off the video here. Today we have covered quite a lot of stuff. We've got our, our you know, our player controllers all set up so we actually can have the player working in the game, playing the game as soon as it takes you from the main menu to there. We've also got the cool animation set up which is quite nice as well. There's still a few other bits that we need to cover for our main menu. For example, we also need to be going we need to go over the options screen and lastly we're also going to be going over the loading screen as well. And Hopefully after that there is one other little UI element that I'm going to be working on before we end off the series Which is the you know when you complete the level we need to just get it to take you back to the main menu It's pretty straightforward, but I hope you guys have really enjoyed it as always guys Thanks for watching make sure you you know make sure you share the video smack that like button and as always guys Make sure you keep on creating see you next time peace out